I was minding my own business and came across the news about collab track between Fred again, Skrillex and Fortet. Yeah, it is almost like Avengers. They were in a podcast in BBC One and there was one thing that really stood out to me. And there's some controversy because uh, we actually kicked Kieran off the project. They kindly kicked Fortet and gave him the most important role. He's pretty much a ghost producer in everything. Is he there it. now? Skrillex later said that Fortet's biggest role in Rumble was the most important role to make sure they didn't overproduce it and F it up. It was really surprising to see even these giant of a producers really need to be careful about overproducing their tracks. So what do you do to not overproduce your tracks and F it up? Before we dive in what overproducing is, there is one simple magical principle that will come really handy. The Pareto Principle. If I make it super simple, the Pareto Principle states that for many outcomes, roughly 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the causes. That 20% is also known as the vital few. The name Pareto Principles comes from the name Wilfredo Pareto. His observation was approximately 80% of Italy's land was owned by 20% of Italy's population. Another super typical example of Pareto is world's wealth distribution of GDP. For example, if we take a look at the year 1989, the richest 20% of the world had around 82.7% of the world's income. Now you may wonder why I'm talking about the wealth distribution of the world and music production channel. The reason is Pareto principle applies to anything that you put effort into. Let's say you've worked for 100 hours for something. The Pareto principle implies that 20 hours of 100 hours actually created the 80% of the outcome. 20% of the effort that you put into your track actually creates the 80% of your track. Now if you become a bit more scientific, the Pareto principle in reality looks something like that. If you call all these things the different things that we've done for our production, idea creation, mixing, mastering, it basically means that here you already reached the 80% of the capacity of your track and you could almost leave it here and avoid all these hours spent creating so little value to your final product. Now we got the Pareto principle, let me explain this on a project. So here we have the same loop but different mixes and each step we are improving a bit. So we have something like this. Obviously sound selection is terrible here. Mix is also terrible but the first big improvement will be definitely changing the presets and the samples so that they match each other a bit more. Immediately, really big improvement on the quality of the loop. Another big thing over here is actually the mix levels. The levels of different channels are really off. Let's fix that. Definitely another really big improvement to the previous version. Maybe the last final thing is putting everything into a room and using a bit effects to enhance the ambience. Let's do that. If you take a look from the first version to this version, the difference will be day and night. The difference is really huge. And now we will make smaller, more polished improvements. Hearing difference should be getting harder and harder. Let's do a bit fine mixing on this one. of this maybe we can use a bit of parallel distortion get that extra crunch let's take a look at that 80 person version and compare it to this final version very good illustration of diminishing returns or pray the principle. The more you go, the difference is getting less and less significant. You should really remember to stop when you can't hear the difference or difference doesn't make any sense. Song fatigue. One of the biggest side effects of overproducing a track is called song fatigue. Let's do a simple experiment. I need pen and paper. This. So how many times can you listen to a track before you really get bored of it? 10? 100? 
5000, for me I think it will be around 422. Let's say this guy over here can finish a track in two weeks. This guy is serious, so he's working full time as a producer. If you put this into the hours, eight hours per day, eight hours total. First 20 of this is idea creation, idea polishing, arrangement, final 20 hours probably mixing and mastering. Now everything becomes super fun if you guess how many times we have played the same loop over and over again during the idea creation. Let's be very optimistic and say one times per minute. Same thing over here. For the arrangement, let's say we are playing less. Same thing applies for the mix and mastering as well. And that means in total 3600 times. If I listen to track 3600 times, I should have already get bored of it like nine to 10 times. And that is the main problem. If you are really overproducing your track, this can be double and triple, and that will really cloud your judgment. You will hate your own track, even though your ideas are pretty cool and everything sounds good. So next time you feel like you're hating your track, think about this number. If you're enjoying the video up to now, please consider like and subscribe. It really helps a ton. Another very common side effect of overproducing the tracks is having too many stuff going on in the track, meaning that your idea is not clear to communicate to your listeners. One of my favorite cartoons when I was a child was, of course, Pokemon. And the main idea was in every single episode you will have a new Pokemon coming in and you had that Pokemon Pikachu? on the focus. By the way, isn't this the cutest thing that you ever seen? Pikachu wearing the Charizard costume? Pika. Look at this! Anyway, what I was telling is like in every episode you focus on a single Pokemon and then you learn about it and the story gets very easy to understand and you were always left curious about the next episode because you know you're gonna learn another Pokemon or another story. Contrary to that, if we had a lot of things going on in a single episode like having the Pikachu and then having some type of clown and then maybe have a ghost episode of Sonic coming in and then some weird Pokemon like this. Pac-Man joining the gang. Now you have too many things and you cannot really explain everything in a short amount of time that you have. Let's demonstrate this on Ableton. Here I have a loop. Take a listen. The problem of this loop is too many good ideas and this is a very common approach. Take a listen to this ARP sound. It sounds good, but it's not really working together with the track. And then we have this violin sound. Another very cool sound, but yet again, it's overcrowded in the track. And finally, we have these hats. Again, I feel like it's overcrowding. Let's take this tree off and focusing on the simple idea of this really cool electric guitar like sound. Now, all together, one more time. Isn't it like tenfold improvement, focusing on single idea, single storyline, and really putting into the front so that we can really enjoy it rather than getting confused with all of the different things happening at the same time. What is your biggest weakness? You know what? I'm really a perfectionist. This is the most humble brag that I ever heard. And weirdly enough, like 90% of the producers that I met says that they are perfectionist. For a long time, I clung to perfectionism like a woman drowning in a sea of my own self doubt It has been the way I create my identity, my worth and my right to be in this world. It has been driven me to achieve and strive for success. Or so I thought. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that Anne Wilson Chef was right all along. Perfectionism is self-abuse of the highest order. I was not perfectionist, but I was scared of people hating my songs. And my solution was being perfectionist and seeing those in my tracks and try to solve every small problems that didn't even exist in the first place. And believe me, it turns into a feedback spiral. The more you believe you found problems, the more insecure that you will become. And more you will convince yourself why you are a bad producer. Being a human and being an artist are complicated. And this is a good thing. Only way to create our own perfect art is accepting all the imperfections that we have 
and those imperfections make our art unique. Contrary to convincing ourselves, those imperfections make us a bad producer or a bad artist. If you want to learn more about music production, I actually have another video right here. Take a look.